Well, good morning, traders. And we're looking at the reaction from the Fed meeting and actually using this as a platform for whether we can actually take much out of this to, to progress. And I think there are some, some areas that we need to explore going forward, especially as we go into the 30th of October meeting. And I think most of that will be centred around what Jerome Powell said around the balance sheet, around the idea that there could be some organic growth in the balance sheet. Now, that wouldn't be necessarily to drive inflation expectations higher. Inflation expectations are probably a reason why the Federal Reserve are not looking to cut aggressively. Uh, the fact that if you look at it, five-year, five-year inflation swaps in the US, they sit around 2%. That's certainly not going to trouble them anyway. And I think that's part of the reason why we're not seeing the Federal Reserve looking for aggressive cuts. Um, but I think, obviously, this is an idea about excess reserves and, and reserve scarcity. So if you can grow the balance sheet, you can probably grow excess reserves. And you can see here from the chart that the balance sheet of the Fed has obviously uh, declined some 16% since 2015. And that's taken the level of excess reserves in the system, um, you know, significantly lower, just about 1.3 trillion, which I think the Fed probably want a buffer of around $2 trillion, given everything we've been seeing in the repo market. I think the market's also been a little bit disappointed that we haven't seen a, a permanent um, uh, POMO coming through. Uh, this is a permanent repo facility. Given everything that we've been seeing, the spike up in repo markets and the funding markets, I think there was a, 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 a view that people were hoping for uh, what they call the POMO, the permanent open market operation. Effectively, that was not announced and, and really didn't give any indication that was going to happen. Most of it's going to be very temporary, like we've been seeing the last couple of days. And I think the market was a little bit disappointed by that. But certainly the balance sheet is something that we are definitely taking out. Are we going to see what people are coming coining QE light. And if you look at the reaction in markets, initially to the statement from the Federal Reserve, we did see some disappointment. We saw the um, S&P trade down to 29.78. Um, we saw the dollar spike, front end yields effectively moving up of, uh, you know, for in, in, in twos um, from 167 to 177 before settling a little bit lower. And we, we actually saw a bit of a flattening, a, a bare flattening of the, the twos tens curve as a result. And it's actually quite a surprise to see financials moving up about 0.4% on the back of that. But I think one of the, the other aspects we've got to take out and why we saw that disappointment initially uh, and that slight dollar strength, the um, S&P weakness, we saw cyclical slightly underperforming defensive stocks. And as I say, we saw that bare flattening of the curve was the idea about what was happening in the dots plots. Yeah, we got a 25 basis point rate cut from the Federal Reserve. It was completely discounted. It was fully expected by the market. But, you know, and again, we got the, the dissenters coming through, Esther, Esther George and Eric Rosengren completely expected. James Bullard calling for a 50 basis point cut, completely expected. He's been fairly consistent with his line over the last two or three weeks. But I think then also you saw the interest earned on excess reserves coming down 30 basis points to 180. I think that was expected to an extent. Then you saw the bottom end of that sort of Fed funds um, range being taken down using the, the RRP facility, the reverse repo facility. That was taken down equisistently. And I think, you know, ultimately you're looking at a situation where people then really looked at the dots plot projection. I think that's where we saw a little bit of concern playing through. If you have a look at what we saw there, look, you know, they saw they, they, the, the median estimate for this year is that we don't see any more rate cuts, but there are seven members looking for rate cuts. So that's given us some hope. And if you look at market pricing, we've got about a 43% chance of a rate cut at the next meeting, as I say, on the 30th, 30th of October, although we'll be exploring more about the balance sheet and the idea that we're going to see this organic growth and the balance sheet moving up, hopefully increasing excess reserves. Market likes excess reserves. It is the oxygen that breathes life into the financial markets. But ultimately, then you go into December where we're seeing a 65% chance of a rate cut coming through. Now, the fact that the median estimate for this year gives no more cuts, but there are seven members who are looking for that rate cut is probably enough for the market to say, OK, fine. You know, if you do see a deterioration in inflation expectations, a de deterioration in the data, we will see a rate cut coming through and we shouldn't be too concerned about that. But have a look into 2020. And I think this is really where it starts getting very interesting. Just the divergence and the disagreement amongst Fed members. If you have a look at the top top dot, that sits at 237. And then if you go to the bottom dot, that's 162. So there's eight members who are calling for rate cuts, and there's seven members who are uh, rate, cu uh, rate cuts, and there's seven members who are, rate, are looking for rate hikes. If you look at the medium number uh, estimate for where the, the Fed see rates next year, the Fed funds rate, um, it's unchanged. So there's a little bit of disappointment there. And if you use that, dis uh, that medium uh, estimate relative to market pricing, there's about a 62 point di divergence. The market is saying, we expect rate cuts. The, uh, the, the median estimate is about 62 basis points above that. That's a mismatch. 
uh, and the market doesn't like that. You go into 2021 and that divergence increases even more. There's a, a, a medium, there's a divergence between market pricing where they see rates and, and where the Fed uh, see uh, the dot plot um, median uh, of around 92 basis points. So again, when we saw that coming through, it wasn't just the divergence between Fed voting members, it was also between market pricing and the, and the, uh, the, the lack of urgency to try and bring rates down. Markets doesn't like that situation. And again, if you go to the, to the long-term neutral rate for long-term rates for the Fed, then you know, that saves at 2.5%. We also have a look at what Mario, um, uh, uh, Jerome Powell said and whether or not he was going to talk about the mid-economic cycle. The market did not like that in the last press conference that he came out with. Now, he was very careful not to talk and actually use those words explicitly, but he did say that the, the, the voting, what we saw from um, the Statement of Monetary Policy and the SEP, effectively gave us a view, that a very strong positive view about what was happening in the US economy. Um, now, he did see risks and he said that the, the rate cuts were a, a reflection of in, ensuring against those risks. But again, it didn't, it, you know, categorically didn't say that there was a, a mid-economic cycle, but he pretty much uh, sounded out to the market that that was going to be the case. But I think what we're looking at at the moment with the, the dollar strength that we saw, um, the, the, the flattening of the curve, was really clear disappointment that the Fed are in no rush to cut, and they're actually still looking at the, the, the US economy in a fairly optimistic eyes. But the fact is, is that we are now looking at excess reserves, and we are looking at the Fed who could be expanding their balance sheet, and the market liked that to an extent. So I think that was really the late session rally that we saw in equities, was the idea that we probably will get better liquidity environment, and the Fed will have to do something about that. So we go into the uh, Asian session with a, a somewhat positive lead based on what we heard, those comments about excess reserves and, and what was happening in liquidity. Um, but ultimately, the market is looking at uh, the Federal Reserve and saying there's not just divergence playing through here, but the market pricing is, is certainly yeah, mismatched from where the, the Fed see things as well.